Okay. All right. So, uh, you don't have to write this down. Okay. I'll tell you stuff you need to write down. Okay. Um, here's the idea. Okay. This is this is the whole idea right here. Okay. Is that uh, what we want to do? Is we want to take a derivative of something like two x plus three to the fourth. But we don't want to uh, multiply it all out four times. That would be a lot of work. And what calculus says is this, okay? Um, this can be written as two functions. I'll write this as two functions. Watch. I have what I call the inside function. So uh, right now, write down uh, f of x equals 2x plus 3 to the fourth. And just make four boxes. Scratch sheet paper. I don't have notes for you. What's well, the same question in your notes? Okay. okay. All right. Trust me, you want to draw the boxes. It's like, you know, you could put two on a page, or two on two, two side by side. Yep. So, nope, you're fine. So, here's what we do. Okay, we first identify the inside of the function. The inside of the function we call u of x. And u of x is 2x plus 3. The outside of the function, we use the variable u. And we're going to call this u to the fourth. Now, before I describe where I got those, do you guys, you guys see what happened? Let's split it up. Now watch, okay? What What's the rate of change of this? The rate of change is always 2. Do you know what the rate of change of this is? 4 to the third. So the point is, is that these type of, uh, these type of things are difficult because there's two rates of change happening. There's a rate of change on the inside. There's a rate of change on the outside. So we, you really have what we call, again, that composition piece. Now, before you do anything, um, just watch this, okay? If I have u of x is equal to, um, we said 2x plus 3, right? And we said f of u uh, is equal to u to the fourth, okay? Watch what happens here. Or I could write this as, instead of that, I could write f of u of x is equal to u to the fourth. Okay, something like that. But if you wanted to put these two functions together, remember when we did compositions last year? We would take this 2x plus 3, and since that's equal to u of x, I would plug it in for u. So if you take a function and put it inside another function, you get f of u of x. So a composition of two functions is, in this case, it is 2x plus 3 uh, to the fourth power. That being the inside, that being the outside. So do you see how you have two functions here? You can write it as 2. And we could take a lot of functions and write them as two or three different functions uh, composed of each other. There's different ways of writing them. For example, you could take the function f of x 
is equal to 2 times x plus 1. Well, you could say u of x is x plus 1. And you could say that f of u is 2u. And But we would never do that because you would never write 2 times x plus 1 like that. You just write 2x plus 2, right? So why do we choose to write things in mathematics like this, 2x plus 3 to the fourth? It, it's smart. We just, you know, save space. And so here's the rule. Here's how we do it. Given the composition function, f of u of x, so if you have a composition, you don't have to expand it all out. What you can do is this. The derivative is f, and you don't have to write this down. If you remember these boxes, you're going to be just fine. Okay, And, and everybody I teach has had great success with this, so you're going to be in good shape today. Okay, Here's what we do. We take the derivative of the outside, and we, we, leave, we leave the inside alone. And then we multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And that notation often confuses a lot of people. The boxes, you'd be like, okay, yeah, I totally know what I'm doing. Okay. So watch. We're going to put this thing to work with the boxes, and then you'll understand. First step. I write my outside function, I write my inside function. A lot of times it's easiest to identify the inside function first. What? So then I do, it says f prime of u. What's the derivative of u to the fourth? 4u to the third. What is the derivative of u? 2. The way we write our final answer, it says take u, uh, u prime of x, which is this piece, and multiply it by f prime of u, which is this piece, 4u to the third. But you guys tell me. So we get this 8u to the third, right? Should my final answer have a u in it or an x in it? It should have an x. So that's why we have this arrow. you got to take whatever u of x was and plug it back in for u. So 8u to the third is going to be the same as 8 times 2x plus 3 to the third. That's how you leave it. Okay, so we'll do some examples together, and then I've got I got some easy problems on back that we're going to go through because, well... The whole idea is that right now it doesn't seem like a shortcut, but there was a time where addition wasn't a shortcut either. There was a time when you did addition, you actually had to think of it as a process. And that's the problem in mathematics, is that when you have to do processes, when other people are doing skills, um, then all of a sudden it feels like everything's too fast for you, right? Like my basic algebra class, they complain because they're like, you're going too fast. 10 divided by 5. I need some time, man. It's like, well, okay, it's 2. When 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 they have to write down 10 dots and break them up into, you know, into 5 groups of 2, that's, that's, just, that's just too slow, right? So here's the deal. Right now, this is a process, and it should be a process. But when I look at this now, there's going to come a time where you will immediately say to yourself, inside is 2, outside is 4u to the 3rd, and you'll say 8, 2x plus 3 to the 3rd, and you will do it like that. But you've got to get used to the process, okay? So let's get used to the process, and then it will become a skill for you. Because we're just doing the chain rule one time right now. We want to eventually do it three times within a single problem and within the product rule and the quotient rule and everything else. So, I know it's hard. So, but today is going to be awesome. What is u of x? Uh, so you can write down number two. I'll let you write down one minus two x minus x squared to the fifth. So write down this problem and then make four boxes. If you want to draw a little arrow, draw the little arrow. One minus two x minus x squared to the fifth. All right, you tell me what to do first. U of x is? Very good. 
So then I identify F of U. U to the fifth. Once I identify inside and outside, uh, I then take derivatives. What is the derivative of U to the fifth? What is the derivative of U? So now all I do is I multiply these two and I substitute this back in for U. So you'll have 5 times this stuff, right? So I'm going to raise negative 10 minus 10x. And that's going to be times U, which is... What is U? To the fourth power. So I didn't write it as a U out here. I just substituted back in. Okay? That's that arrow that reminds me. You guys try a couple problems on your own. Okay? Try this one on your own. Okay? 1 minus x to the ninth. You just try it. Uh, because 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 times negative 2x is negative 10 x. I did 4 times 2 was 8. So I just make my four boxes, draw my little arrow to remind myself. I put u of x over here, which is, I put f over here, which is u the ninth. What's the derivative of u of the ninth? 9 u of the eighth. What's the derivative of 1 minus x? So here's all I do, guys. I just multiply these two together, and you get negative 9 u to the eighth, right? But instead of writing u, I'm going to write 1 minus x. So you got to substitute that back in. So you guys said you want to see uh, how we got number 2 again? So number 2, I'll just do it one more time, this, this last part. You do see how we got that, right? Yep. You sure can. I'm just trying to... Trying to save us time. So, uh, when you do this part, you've got this guy times that, okay? And so, you, you, well, so if you write it out like that and you substitute your U in, so this is the mistake that everybody makes, you guys. Here, here's a mistake that everybody made last year, and this this was this was uh, frustrating for me. Can I distribute the five through this part? Can I distribute the five through this part? Yes. You you can distribute the five through if it's not being squared to the third or to the fourth. But you can't distribute the 5 through there. So you do distribute the 5 through here, which is why you get the negative 10 minus 10x, and then uh, times that to the fourth power. Okay? okay. Let's try, uh, write down a, a negative 3 sine of 4x. Let's try that one. Right now, we'll do this one together, and I'll, I'll have you do nine on your own. Okay. 
So the inside, as Emma said, is 4x. The outside is negative 3 sine of u. So I take the derivative of each. What's the derivative of 4x? 4. What's the derivative of negative 3 sine of u? So remember that the derivative of the entire function is going to be the two derivatives multiplied together, substituting u back in. Negative 12 cosine of, remember, put that 4x back in there. Can you take the negative 12 times the 4? No. Try 9 on your own. Tangent of 2x minus 3. Tangent of 2x minus 3. You got it? Okay. All right. It's fine. Derivative tangent secant squared. I said, what's the derivative tangent secant squared? So what's the derivative of 2x minus 3? 2, derivative of tangent of u. Multiply those together. And so you get 2 on the outside, secant squared of 2x minus 3. Now, everybody look at this real quick, okay? Put your final answer. Do you see where the 2x minus 3 came from in the final answer? Yeah, that's the part that gets left alone, right? That's the part that gets left alone. You see where the secant squared came from? That's the derivative of tangent. And you see where the 2 came from? That's the derivative of the inside. So again, the way I think of it when I do this, and I try to do it quickly, is I say the derivative of the inside, which is 2, times the derivative of the outside, which is with the inside left alone. So that's the way I always think of it in my head. Derivative of the inside times the derivative of the outside with the inside left alone. What? Well, I'll do this one. Uh, right. Eventually you will. Trust me. Do this one on your own. 8x to the third minus 5x all to the fourth power. I will tell you the shortcut doesn't get any shorter than just saying derivative of the outside or inside times the derivative of the outside with the inside left alone. That's that's as unfortunately there's no easier way around it. But making the boxes helps kind of uh, put into people's brains what we're supposed to do. And there's no shame in continuing to make the boxes throughout uh, all your time. Four times twenty-four is ninety-six. Did you have your inside and outside set up correctly? What was the derivative of u to the fourth? Or u to the third? What's the derivative of 8x to the third minus 5x? So, when you multiply these, you can take the 4 times all that, which is 96x squared minus 20, and then you multiply that by u to the third, which is 8x to the third minus 5x all to the third power. Is that what you got? Good. Okay. I need to teach you a different kind of problem now. Okay. 3 over 4x minus 2.
Try three and four together. Uh, you can do four on your own. We'll we'll do three together. Three over four x minus two. Three over four x minus two. I want to find the derivative of a. So now we got a rational function. You know how do how do we handle something like that? And uh, you got two options. It used to be that what what rule would you use to find the derivative of that? Quotient. You don't have to use a quotient rule. If you want to, you can use a chain rule. And I just write it as 3 times 4x minus 2 to the negative 1. Some people hate the quotient rule. They, they think it's big and it's bulky. Well, if you don't want to use a quotient rule, you can always write the numerator up top and then use your chain rule if you want. So what's the inside? 4x minus 2. What's the outside? Okay, what's the derivative of 3u to the negative 1? Negative 3u to the negative 2 or negative 3 over u squared. What's the derivative of 4x minus 2? 4. Multiply them together. To the negative 2. Can't leave a negative exponent. So just think about it, everybody. This is what I got. And you know when you use the quotient rule, the quotient rule is everything divided by the bottom squared, right? Well, look. You take the bottom and square it. There you have it. So it, it does end up being the same. It's just just so like that. See if you can do 4 on your own. 4 is a negative 2 over x minus 1 quantity to the 5th. You try that one on your own. All right, here we go. Uh, what's the uh, what's the inside? What is the outside? Derivative. Or ten over u to the six. So u prime is. Everybody watch. I, did you notice what happened? Watch. Wait, let's suppose for a second. Let's suppose for a second that you forgot how to use a chain rule. And you just said to yourself, oh no, I don't know how to chain, use a chain rule. And you just decided you were going to use our, our normal uh, power rule. A normal power rule says you take this and you drop it in front. So you would get 10. And then you decrease the exponent by, which is 10 over x minus 1 to the 6. That's what we got, isn't it? No. The only reason it works out is because the rate of change of the inside is... One. So if the rate of the change on the inside is one, then technically you you, you know you, you could just do that. So if the rate of the change on the inside is one, then it just happens to work out like that. Yeah, Haley. Well, <laughs> trust me, we'll get more difficult here. Okay. Uh, try number 11. 5 over 3 minus 7x. 5 over 3 minus 7x. Try that. <laughs> 5 over 3 minus 7x. Number 11. 5 over 3 minus 7x. Try that one quick. Well, I don't know. We'll just practice, practice, practice.
Negative seven times negative five is three five. You guys got it? Okay. Uh, we try something a little bit different now. You can write these two. Uh, cosecant of 3x squared and sine of tangent. Cosecant of 3x squared and sine of tangent. Yep, we're going to try. Uh, I, we're going to work, work them both out together and you're going to try a couple. What's the inside? What's the outside? Not squared, just cosecant of you. That would be a uh, cosecant squared. That so that's that's the difference. Okay. What's why is it the u squared? If you had it like that, but then you would just make it 9x squared, and 9x squared would be your u. Okay. All right, what's the derivative of 3x squared? 6x, what's the derivative of cosecant of u? So the only thing different about a problem like this is when you substitute it back in, you have you have two parts to substitute it. Whoops! Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. So uh, when we write this, we can write as negative six x times the cosecant of what is u? That's the derivative. How about number six? What's the inside for number six? So number six, we have sine of tangent of x. Sine of tangent of x. So the inside is tangent of x. What's the outside? So we got sine of u, we got tangent of x. What's the derivative of tangent of x? What's the derivative of sine of u? So my final answer is going to be secant squared of x times cosine of tangent of x. Try number 13, sine of cosine.
sine of x times cosine of cosine of x. Did you get that? So you guys think you got this? Okay, let's try. Uh, let's let's just try something that's just slightly different than four uh, x minus nine square root square root of four x minus nine. We haven't talked about radicals at all, have we? Well, it's not that bad. We just simply write it to the one half power. So what's going to be the inside? What's going to be the outside? U to the one half. What's the derivative of 4x minus 9? 4. And derivative of u to the one half? 1 half u to the negative 1 half. Uh, or 1 over 2 roots of u. Right? Well, when you multiply the 4, 4 over 2 is 2 over the root of 4x minus 9. That's your derivative. Nope. Uh, write down 19. Uh, 8 over the square root of 3x minus 5. Now we'll kind of put a couple pieces together and we'll see something even a little bit trickier. So uh, 8 over the square root of 3x minus 5. 8 over the square root of 3x minus 5. Okay, so uh, you, if you rewrote this, you would rewrite as 8 times uh, 3x minus 5 to what power? Negative 1 half. That's how you would write it, to the negative 1 half. So what's your inside function? 3x minus 5. What's your outside? Get you the negative 1 half. What's the derivative of 3x minus 5? 3, derivative of 8 u to the negative 1 half. Negative 4u to the negative 3 halves. Right? Yeah, negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 halves. See? You got a negative on the bottom. So that's what people get mixed up on. They write the half, they subtract, they get it negative a half because that's what they get used to. But. It's a negative one half subtract one is a negative three half, so I got to use the three halves in the denominator. So now, when you multiply these together, what do you have on the top? Negative twelve over see if you can do twenty all on your own. Cotangent of one over x squared. Cotangent of 1 over x squared. Well, I can give you a hint if you didn't see it. That's... But you go, Billy Barber. For one over x squared, so use the quotient inside the chain, and that's fine. But. But it, it does get kind of icky. What's the inside? What's the outside? What's the derivative of 1 over x squared? 
Negative 2 over x to the third. What's the derivative of cotangent? Negative cosecant squared of u. So what you have to do is you have to multiply these together. Will the result be positive or negative? Positive. So on top, you're going to have a 2 cosecant squared of 1 over x squared. And on the bottom, you're going to have x to the third. Can you cancel off these x's? No. And, and you guys, I, you know, that's just, that's the algebra. And I, I, as I see certain classes come through, some people really struggle with that stuff. That's, you just got to know your algebra in that situation. You can't cancel this stuff off. So, so you feel like you got this, huh? Uh, so how about this? On Monday, we will go ahead and uh, we'll we'll do then some of the harder chain rule problems. So, so those are the easy ones, okay? We'll do the yeah. Those are the those are all the basic ones. So on Monday, we'll show you the harder stuff, and then you'll get an assignment, okay? So just uh, no assignment. Just continue to work on your stuff, okay? okay.